Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we will talk about the recent events in the new areas occupied by Turkey in Kurdistan, focusing on Rojava. This area have a newer Turkish influence and we will go through what the risks are with this new occupation. If you want another video about the Turkification of Bakuri Kurdistan, hit the like button and make sure that you let us know about that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so that you get informed right away as we upload something new on the channel. Also, consider donating an amount to our PayPal account in order to help us survive. More information will be provided in the description box below. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. The situation with Turkey and Rojava starts in 2015. At that time, the Islamic State is a big threat towards everyone around them, occupying cities after cities. The strongest opposition that the Islamic State faced is the Kurds from Rojava, who through the group of YPG and YPJ gives the Islamic State real resistance for the first time. During the fall the same year, the Kurds really started a successful expanding of Rojava as Islamic State faced defeat after defeat against the Kurds. The success continued throughout 2016 with the liberation of Al-Shadadi, Al-Hawl, Tishrindam and Manbij, as well as the start of the Raqqa operation. The reactions from the world were very positive, the world praised the Kurds as heroes, but another reaction came from the neighboring Turkey, a reaction which would be important to understand the future of the Kurds. The Kurds suddenly was accused of committing ethnic cleansing of Arabs and Turkmens in the area. The accusations called it a planned demographic change and a structure which was a security threat against the Turkish borders, something that Turkey couldn't ignore. You've been in the YPG, and how did you come to join the YPG? So I spent two years in the Wahdat. The Wahdat are a group of beliefs, and they are the people. I was with the government in the process of the elections, and I saw that the government is not capable of taking over any country in this country, and they are going behind the work, the work, the work, the work, the work, the work, and I joined with the Wahdat. Some journalists have claimed recently that the YPG have been uh, ethnically cleansing Arabs from areas they've captured uh, of, of Rojava, or of, of Hasaka province, uh, pushing Arabs out. As an Arab fighter within the YPG, what do you think about those claims? وتوقف ضد العرب ما كان شفتني هلا بين وحدات حماية الشعب قاتل فهمت علي شلون كان نزعت سلاحي ورحت قعدت مع العرب فهمت علي شلون وانضميت مع النظام أو مع الفصائل العربية الأخرى فهمت علي شلون هذا شيء عاري عن الصحة اللي هجرت العالم من منازلها هي مرتزقة داعش يعني مبارح هلا أدك بها الحي لما دخلت داعش هون هجرت الأهالي وأول ما دخلت على هذا الحي بلشت تقطع روس المواطنين وتذبح البشرية والأطفال والنساء. In reality, Turkey only wanted reasons to invade and prevent the Kurds from the success. The rhetoric was obvious. Turkey will never allow a Kurdish state in Syria. A clear warning from the president of Turkey. So, before entering Rojava for the first time, Turkey now had two global reasons to invade Rojava. The first was to fight terrorism, which in a Turkish perspective mainly included the YPG and not the Islamic State. However, to get a green light from the world, Turkey also conducted strikes against the Islamic State simultaneously as they supported them behind closed doors. If you want to follow up on the Turkish support for the Islamic State, check out our relationship video between the two parts. Link to that video will be provided in the description box below. The second reason was that Turkey informed the world about a fear of the PKK, an organization within Turkish occupied Kurdistan which has fought a war over 30 years with Turkey. Turkey meant that this organization would operate through their allies in Rojava. So in 20th of January 2018, Turkey made their move and invaded Rojava, firstly through Afrin. Reports of how Turkish-backed forces started looting the city of Afrin came immediately. 
private homes, stores, and other property, as well as political and military sites, were all looted by the invading forces, something that locals of Afrin has told the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. This is what a Turkish photographer said to CNN. They are looting everything, goods, animal, goats, even pigeons, Bulent Kilic said. I've been in war zones for many years now, two, three guys looting, it happens. I didn't even take much notice at first, but then I saw that they were in a such hurry to take everything from this city. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights soon claimed that over 300,000 civilians had fled the city, most of them were Kurdish, and that the city was almost empty when Turkish forces took it, as the last bunch of civilians fled together with the retreating YPG forces. A whole month later, the same source claims that the occupying forces of Afrin, the Turkish forces, still is looting private properties of the city simultaneously as they are preventing civilians to return to the city. In this article, and I will of course leave a link to it in the description box below, it is said that it appears that this Turkification policy has been a long planned move by the Turkish state and that the Turkish government is trying to implement the Turkification of the area to change the demography of Afrin Canton and replace it with Turkish and Turkified nations. The article continues by claiming that Kurdish children are forced to fly the Turkish flag, forced to thank the Turkish President Erdogan, and of course, the school plan has been changed to learn children false claims about the Rojava community in the same time as Turkish forces are praised as heroes. <laughs> This article from another source continued the claims of the Afrin Turkification by saying that the invading forces are changing landmarks to suit a more Turkish friendly appearance as well as destroying historical monuments and sites that is not Turkish. All over the city the Turkish flag is raised and in both school and society the Kurdish language has been forbidden, whereas only Turkish and Arabic is allowed. The article claimed that Turkish forces have resettled Arabic people from the Syrian cities of Homs and Hama into the Afrin Canton, a typical way to change the demography in the city. Now, just by looking at this video, we can see what kind of propaganda the Turkish state is using towards the world and not at least the Turkish people in Turkey. <laughs> Biz burada Afrinli olmayan insanların Afrin içinde barınmasını istemiyoruz. YPG buraya, buraya ait bir örgüt değildi. Buraya sonradan geldi. Malımızı, mülkümüzü talan ettiler. Namusumuza göz, e, namusumuza göz diktiler. Ve onları burada biz istemiyoruz. Onlar buranın gerçek sahipleri değiller. Ceşharat malı mekharakır. Ne bazı meş, ne devri meş, ne kali meş, ne kırçık meş. Biz Türkiye'nin burada bizim için yaptığı insani yardımları görüyoruz. Biz Türkiye'nin onun için burada kalıcı olmasını sağlıyoruz. Biz daha öncesini de gördük. YPG Türkiye'den önce buradayken bizim malımızı, mülkümüzü, hayvanlarımızı, barınaklarımızı, kızlarımızı aldı. Onun için Türkiye'nin burada olmasını önemsiyoruz ve istiyoruz. This article from Kurdistan 24 quotes Erdogan promising to give back Afrin to its rightful owners, which he says is not the Kurds. According to the article, this reminds a lot of the occupation of northern Cyprus, which since 1974 has been occupied by Turkey, with kind of the same promises back then. Another article from the BBC was posted in February 2019. During this time, Turkey had expanded their occupation from Afrin in the west to Cerablus in the east. 
A month before that, Erdogan had once again claimed that this was no invasion but an operation to secure and protect their own borders and provide people with peace. These claims come even though the Rojava community never attacked Turkey and have never done anything to harm any people, neither in Turkey or in Syria. The article further on claims that only organization registered in Turkey is allowed to work in areas occupied by Turkey. Street names and symbolism and flags linked to anything Kurdish has been removed and destroyed and the historical and cultural statue of Kawa the blacksmith in the center of Afrin has been destroyed. The Kurdish celebration of Nowruz have been totally forbidden, which made Syria direct react and write a whole separate article about the cultural cleansing of Afrin. In the fall of 2019, the Turkish army also invaded Rojava from other parts and is at the creation of this video controlling cities like Girispi and Serekani. And just like Afrin, reports of displacement, cultural and political cleansing has been made. Old people has been forced out of their homes with the argument that their sons are members in the SDF. Of course, baseless claims only to change the demography of these areas. There is no doubt that the Kurds are being ethnically cleansed and that Turkey is ethnically cleansing those parts of Rojava that is occupied. And unfortunately, the only thing we can expect now is that more places will be attacked by Turkey, especially as the Western world is quiet about the situation. What do you think is the best thing for the Kurds to do at the moment to stop Turkey from their offensive? Comment down below and let us know. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel.